Hello and a very good evening. My name is Vishal Yadav and with me I have one of the emerging all-rounders from the South African cricket, Nadine De Klerk. Hi, how are you? My first question. Um I'm very good, thanks and you and thank you so much for having me. Uh how how are things back home, Nadine? Uh particularly in South Africa, how are things there? Um I think it's getting a lot better. I think COVID is starting to to ease away a little bit, so um i think we we get to train a little bit more in groups and and in our teams as well so um thus far it's, it's been a good start to 2022 so far and and obviously with the world cup coming up i think it's very important that your preparation is um is up there and and that you do all the right things great 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 you talked about the world cup you talked about the preparation and i want to bring, bring this point because uh, you know we got this news a while ago that daniel nikok uh has an ankle fracture and i know it's devastating uh to her and also for you know for you as a team member as well given that we are so close to world cup uh, what was your first reaction when you got to know about this news um i actually got goosebumps the day i found out i think um obviously with the world cup she's she's quite a feisty character as we all know her and um I mean she's one of the best captains in the world according to me i think she's a brilliant player as well um she's always leading from the front and she wears her heart on her sleeve as a massive massive passion for the game and um yeah i think it's a massive loss for for our team but i, I still think our team is in a in a pretty good space as well um i think we've had the same core of players um for a couple of years now which is which is good um and obviously some new faces in and around the squads as well so we will dearly miss her um and her leadership especially her leadership um she's an experienced campaigner but um yeah i wish her all the best with the recovery and i know it's it's pretty bad timing um so my heart broke for her but but like i said it's it's very unfortunate but hopefully the team the team will represent her well at the end of the day and i am not kidding you know i had the same feeling even i had goosebumps the moment i read this news uh that that they won't be a part of the world cup and uh, i think she won't be playing cricket for at least next 3 months it was it was heartbreaking because i've been following and watching south african women's cricket and the way uh, you know that the team has performed overall under her leadership it's amazing it's 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 incredible i think that's the sad part as well i think from a south african point of view um we've done so well in this this last couple of years where we kind of go to world cups as the underdog and and no one expects us to to actually um compete in the world cup and i think uh, that has a lot to do with with the way danai led the team and and the way she has performed so i think it's devastating for her, the fact that she knows that that we feel we are so close uh to picking up that trophy and um for her not to be a part of of the world cup this year um i think it's it's never great to be to miss any tour but especially a world cup um that is a really important one from a south african point of view but yeah like i said again um hopefully it's a well deserved break for her and, and hopefully she just comes back stronger right right i will de- definitely talk about the world cup uh but before that let us go back to your early days when you started playing cricket uh in one of the interviews i read that you know your family particularly your father has played a huge role in in you taking up cricket today could you tell us more about it I've been very privileged uh with the way I grew up. I have a few family members who um who played for Somerset and and my one cousin plays for the Netherlands. So we are quite wow. a, a a big cricket family. My brother played in the Netherlands for a bit as well. So um we all love cricket to bits. My dad is a massive fan, so he used to throw balls uh to me all the time in the in the backyard and um even till this day um he's always up and about about the game and and how I can get better and and how to support me. So Um I've been really privileged um to to grow up with my brother and and cousins who who, who used to play cricket and and some of them still do and um yeah I think massive credit has to go to them for for getting me into the game at a very young age. Uh do do you also have a WhatsApp group a family WhatsApp group where uh, you know you all discuss cricket on a daily basis or whenever you are out on tours and when you come back home? No, unfortunately not but look my dad is a uh, every morning He even sets the the clocks back home in in the overseas time wherever we are, so he can make sure that he phones me and and talk about all the games and and all the things I've done right or wrong or whatever he feels uh, is necessary for me to hear. But um, yeah, he's been a great supporter. Like he's always there for me, and and 
he's always my number one guy. I can always give him a phone call. And even if it's in the middle of the night in South Africa when I'm overseas, um, he always answers and he's always always up for su- suggestions and, and ways to, to help me get better or even just feel better when it's not going as well. So um, it helps having someone like that that really has your back no matter what happens because cricket can become tough and lonely, especially when you're overseas. And it's great to have a guy like my dad um, always being there for me. So it's quite obvious that cricket definitely you uh, runs in your blood and also in your family's blood. But I think that's not the only sport which you play, right? Uh, you were also a javelin thrower. Uh, did did you play any other sport as well? And what made you take up cricket professionally and not any other sport? Um, I'm a massive sport lover, so uh, I used to do everything I could. Um, High school was a bit different, obviously, because it was in the same seasons. But I used to play hockey as well, and I did a bit of javelin. uh, So I wanted to take that professionally uh, at first. And then I I just played for Northerns, uh, all fun and games, and um, started performing really well at about 15, 16 years old. And um, then got the call up at the age of 17 and kind of had to make a decision of whether I want to take up cricket seriously. And then obviously I had to... I had to sacrifice the javelin and the hockey just makes sense to, to take cricket professionally. And um, yeah, look, I'm not looking back ever since. I think it was one of the best choices I've made um, to actually take up cricket professionally. I mean, to travel the world and, and see the world and had I've had the opportunity to play in the Big Bash, which was an amazing experience. And I think you learn and grow so much as a cricketer, especially playing uh, with all these other people and, and the people you met along or meet along the way and that I've met in the past. Um, is really special as well. So, yeah, still going strong and hopefully for, for a few more years to come. A few more years? Uh, I'm, I'm sure you're going to play for another decade or so. <laughs> I hope so. I really okay. do because it's, it's, it gives you a reason to wake up every morning. Um, I like Even when I have off days, I, I just want to get out to the net, just want to bat and ball or field and um, you just never get tired of it. So, I, hopefully it continues for, for a very long time. Amazing. So, Nadan, you made your debut at the age of 17 for South Africa. And within a few months, you were on that England flight to the 2017 Women's World Cup. Uh, you're part of this World Cup, but you did not get to play any matches there. And uh, as a 17-year-old, what was it like being a part of that squad, seeing South Africa reach the semi-finals? And of course, that heartbreaking loss uh, against England in the semi-finals. How, how emotional was it all? I think it was it was definitely unexpected. I, I did not expect to get on that on that flight at all. Uh, first things first, but um, once I got there, it was really to see. Obviously, it was only my second tour. I think at that stage, I played a, a little bit against India and, and I think Zimbabwe or Ireland in South Africa, but I think three or four games. So to really see how how the people go about their games and and how things work um, at the international level. I think I've learned so much, even though I didn't play a game um, at that World Cup, but just to see, I've had the opportunity to play in a warm-up game against Australia for a bit, but apart from that, I think just to to just watch and just learn and, and see how people go about things. And um, obviously, it opens your eyes a little bit. I had to go back home after that World Cup and, and really work hard on not necessarily the cricket things, but but fitness and, and weight and all of that, those type of things. And, and you realize all these little things actually matters. Um, and I think that just opened my eyes to, to like, this is what I want to do and this is where I want to go. Um, and especially that World Cup losing in that semi-final, um, it was heartbreaking, but it was such an amazing experience to actually get that far. Um, and I think the girls, just ever since that World Cup, uh, just got better and better by the day and and hopefully we have another shot at the world cup uh this year in new zealand we we hope you do you know we indians uh they love south africa uh <laughs> I, i'll come back to that but uh you know so 2017 happened and fast forward you know to to another semi-final that you were a part of in the t20 world cup uh again although the entire series was special for south africa uh, tell me about this rain curtailed the super dramatic the semi-final match against Australia that night? That was like, it, it still feels like yesterday that it happened. Um, till this day, if I see some of the highlights of that game, I, I just start crying because it's devastating to just think about it like that. We got so close and obviously there were, there were a few factors with the rain and, and whatever and whatever. But um, 
I think again, just it shows that that no matter what um, what gets given to us or what we face, that that our team is always up for for the fight. Um, I think like that's the that's the special thing about our team is is we have so much young talent in the team that's willing to to wait for the opportunity and really um, jump on it whenever it's given. I mean, it, it it can become tough when you when you don't play for tour after tour after tour and then there's one opportunity that you have to use. But I think that's the special thing about our team is uh, no one's ever just sitting back and saying, you know what, oh, well, I'm not playing. So everybody's willing to work hard and, and sacrifice a lot of things and wait for the opportunity. So I think that is really, um, that's really critical. And I think that's one thing that gives us a really good opportunity um, leading up to this World Cup is, is the, the passion and, and the fire to get better and to win this World Cup because we really feel like, like we have a good shot and um, the team's been working really well together and, and it's been a long journey for this team. Uh, for for great core of this of this team, and I think that's just going to make it even more special. And also, you know, I am sure you would remember, but for the viewers and listeners, I must say that you were brilliant with your bowling that day. Three wickets, conceding just 19 runs in that four-over spell. What was going through your head? What was you thinking? To be honest with you, when when I got told the morning before the game that that I'm actually in the playing eleven, in my head I was like. Well, I'm not going to bowl because, you know, I'm just here as the replacement. I'm going to be the specialised fielder um, and I'm going to just be somewhere around there. And uh, the captain told me that, you know what, you're going to bowl somewhere in the middle and whatever. And things didn't go according to plan. And when she told me, like, I don't know, early on in the seventh over or so, you up. I was just thinking, listen, just land the ball. Just don't full tosses or no balls. Just keep it on the pitch and just keep it simple. And, um, yeah, I think... Uh, till this day, I don't know how it happened, but it's one of those moments that's the special thing about the cricket life is that one day you get that everything just clicks and it's such a special moment because you work your whole life for one or two of those moments to happen. And for me, in that case, to happen in the World Cup semi-final was definitely the highlight of my career and I, I don't think anything will ever beat that unless we win the World Cup, probably. But um, yeah, such a special moment and I think for me, it taught me that you know what, anything is possible. Never feel like you don't have a chance or I'm sitting on the side, I don't have the opportunity to play because um, anything can happen at any given time and you just have to be ready and, and just do your work that you need to do. You know, I was talking to Chloe the other day and she told the exact same thing. The girls are super ready to take up the opportunities and we see so many young girls just raising up their hands and taking, okay, this is my shot, I'll take the opportunity. Uh, and that's exactly what South Africa has done. That's very important. I feel like sometimes you get, like I said, it's, it's a massive mental roller coaster as well. And it can, it can become so, like I said earlier, difficult and lonely at times. But it's so special when you get games like these where, where everything just fires. Even if it's bad ball field, you're all going to get, we all know cricket's more failure than, than probably success. But I mean, those little moments of success is probably what sticks. That's what people remember. That's what you as a cricketer remember. And that's what you work for all your life. So, um, yeah, I think that specific game is just, um, it was so special. I think I'll treasure it for the rest of my life. And, um, yeah, again, like I always go back to that specific game to tell myself, like, you've got this. And you know what? Don't ever give up on any tour or any game at any given stage. Like, anything can happen, especially with COVID around. Um yeah, you never know what happens, and and like I said, you can all you can do is do your bit and and believe and go out and and give it a, your best shot. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, uh, we understand that you know it can get uh, mentally super taxing at times. Uh, so the question is, how do you unwind yourself, or what exactly do you do? Are you into reading books? Are you into movies? How do you spend your leisure? How do you spend your free time? I'm a bit, uh, I think, uh, like, even when I look for, um, even if I look, <laughs> if I look for my off days, I always find my way back to cricket, I guess. Um, so it is, it becomes a bit difficult, but uh, I won't say I'm so into fishing, but that's what we do in our off time. Um, I have a little sister that keeps me busy and keeps me young, even though I am still young, but she's always up and about. So we love just putting on some music, even if we go fishing for a bit or spend time with my family. Um, obviously, because we're away from home a lot of times and, and you don't always get to spend the time with the family that you want. Um, and with, 
with COVID these days, it's even if it's even harder to be with with family. So um, yeah, I think just to be with my family, with people who makes me feel good, who makes me feel comfortable, um, people that I know have my back, and and that's pretty much what I do. That's that's all I need. I love a movie, love music, popcorn, bolton. Um, you know, I love to have a bit of a bribe back home, and and that's pretty much what I do in my off time. Okay, okay, that's an excellent routine, I must say. Uh, Nadan, you have played fourteen ODIs and around twenty-three T20 so far. Which format do you enjoy playing the most personally? Definitely T20s. <laughs> and why so? I don't know. I just I love the pace of the game, and I love how exciting it can get, and the. The thing that I love the most about T20 cricket is just the fact that you're always learning, you're always growing. Every time I, I watch the Big Bash or or whatever, I just see someone bowling a new delivery that I've never seen. Or um, the way the batters just these days can top edge balls for sixes, or the shots they invent. Or I don't know, I just love the pace of the game. I feel it's always exciting. Um, I'm quite a pumped up person. I like I'm feisty, and I, I, I don't know. I just get so excited. So I think, um, yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed the T20 format um, everywhere I've played so far. And ODI cricket is really good, but I, I think I'm still finding my feet in that format where I'm not quite sure. But um, yeah, T20 cricket's a lot of fun. I feel like you just go out there and you, you back your skills and you just do what you do best. Absolutely. You talked about T20s and I must bring uh, the WBBL, Women's Big Bash League, uh, Brisbane Heat was outstanding last year. Uh, you were quite economical with the, with the bowling. How was it like playing under the leadership of you know Jess and also with the likes of India's Poonam Poonam Yadav? Poonam was a lot of fun. I have to say that um, I've had a lot of fun with her, a lot of banter as well. Um, so it was really good to actually get to play with a few other internationals as well, and and again to see how they go about things. But also, the thing for me is just to see how they are off the field. And I think we've had so much fun off the field that it took a lot of pressure off uh, when you when you got onto the park again. But um, Jess, is a, she's a lovely person, first of all. She makes you she makes you feel comfortable and welcome all the time. And, and they always look out for you, which is really good. And I feel really crucial as well. But uh, she was a brilliant leader, I think. Only taking the leadership last year as a first season, um, and again this year, only for a second time around, being one of the leading wicket takers, she's a brilliant cricketer. Um, she's she bowled really well, and and like I said, she's just leading from the front, and she's a real feisty character as well, and and always leading from the front. So um, I learned again. Uh, Ash was brilliant as well, being the head coach there, and, and all the other the coaching staff. They they're always willing to help and and put in the extra work with you and. And help you get better. So um, I definitely took a lot from that, um, especially last year, and and hopefully that that helps me in in the next year or so um, coming back to play international cricket for South Africa. Correct, correct, correct. We talked about women's big bash league, so I must uh, you know also talk about women's IPL whenever that happens, and hoping that it's a full fledged women's IPL, and we have the same franchisee as the men's have today. I ask the I ask this question to Chloe as well. Uh, I'll ask the question to you as well. If you were to pick one team, uh, you know that you want to play for, which, which uh, team would would that be? Uh, it's it's the I'm a massive KKR fan. I'm not sure how the women's IPL will work going forward. I know they have the four teams now, um, right. but I support the KKR men's team. So because I'm a massive Jock Ellis fan, I think everybody knows that, and he used to play for them all. <laughs> For all the years, so if I had to choose a team, I think it would definitely, um, it would definitely either be RCB or or KKR. And I don't know how the women's teams work, but I love the pink outfit. I think it was the Supernovas, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, but yeah, that would be great. I would love the the women's IPL to start, and obviously, it would even be better to be a part of it. So I can't wait for that to happen, and and hopefully that is pretty soon, especially for I think for Indian cricket as well. So Chloe opted for uh, RCB Royal Challengers Bangalore. You have opted for Kolkata Knight Riders. Interesting. That would be an interesting battle. I think it would uh, be a really good battle. <laughs> all right. With the with the World Cup around the corner, uh, how do you assess the overall? You know, personally, how do you assess your your performance and uh, going forward in the tournament? What do you want to sort of focus more on? 
Um, I think obviously de depends on on what role uh, you play within the side. Um, but I think whatever you do at the end of the day, um, being an all rounder, you always know that you're going to have your hands full. Um, that the captain can 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 press your button at any given stage, either with a bat or or with a ball. Um, so I think, like especially from a personal point of view, I've, I've been working a lot on that, especially bowling uh, in the middle periods and and bowling to certain fields and and trying a trying a few new things. Um, and obviously, I, I think it's just about the growth in it as well. And and with the batting, it's it's really playing that crucial role wherever, if, even if it's down the order or or, or wherever. Um, so yeah, and I think the team has been has been preparing really well um as i said earlier as well i think uh the team's come a long way uh we've had we've we have a few senior players and and we have a few a few younger players that that's been in and around the squad for for quite a long time as well so i can't wait to see to see what the world cup's going to bring i think uh we're going to hear a few few new names see a few new faces and and hopefully a few new uh superstars um coming up for the future so i'm really excited to see what what that brings no, very excited for that uh, you you talk about you know a few young stars and i must uh, remind you that you are still 21 and you're also one of the young stars that we have today uh, uh, which also brings me to this question you know what's that one goal or one record you know you aspire to have up your sleeves uh, going forward in the in your playing cricketing career well, one thing I've I've always wanted to do, I've, I've I've said to my dad the other day, I always feel like whenever I really put in a big performance, we always end up on the losing side, and I never quite feel like that performance um, is up there or that it that it's it wasn't good enough to to win us the game. So I think um, I would love, especially in a World Cup or, or wherever it is in my career, is is one day to to do the impossible, um, to really come out and 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 smash a quick 50 when we need it the most or come in and take a hat trick or I don't know do something that that Puna myself did in the previous World Cup taking I think a hat trick against Australia um and turning the the game upside down so I think that's definitely one thing I would love to put in a match winning performance um for my team and uh, not always just be like I am the young I'm I'm young and I'm still upcoming and I'm still learning but to really take that responsibility that whenever I do get the opportunity even if it's not in this World Cup, uh, if I'm a part of it or not, doesn't really matter. But but going forward um, in my future, I would really love to to become a match winner for South Africa and and contribute with with both both bat and and ball. Hey Nadine, I, I genuinely hope that you get to you know get to this goal of yours and achieve it in the upcoming World Cup. Uh, and and I'm not sure if you're active on Twitter, but uh, there's this whole bunch of cricket fans on Twitter, Indian cricket fans who genuinely support and want all the good for the South African uh, women's cricket team. And in fact, uh, I've read uh, several times that they have tweeted that you know, the South African team is their second best team, uh, second favorite team after India, of course, and they want you guys to see them uh, in, the, in the finals of the World Cup. Hopefully we can make them proud and, and this year is a bit of fortune coming our way. Um, but like I said, that's something we can't control at the end of the day. I think we just we just need to stick together, um, you know, keep our keep our feet on the ground and, and really craft together as a team. And, um, you know, the sky's the limit. Anything is possible. We have a really good bunch of players. Like I said, we have some very experienced players. We have some very good young players as well. Um, like I said, we never know if you might see a few new faces. And like I said, anything can happen in the COVID world. But I think I really do think we have a really good side. And, and as long as we're in it together, then I think um, you never know this year might might be a, a bit of a, a spark for the South African team. Fingers, fingers crossed. Nadine, on that note, I wish you and the entire South African team all the best for the West Indies Tour and also for the Women's World Cup. Uh, thank you so much for taking our time and having this chat with us. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me.